Michigan may be outlawing cloud computing. Let's talk about that. So welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. I'm Dave. Let's get going. So um, many of you uh, know what a VPN is, a virtual private network. It's able to create an encrypted tunnel between your device and a remote server, which is able to hide your traffic from local networks, uh, ISPs, and many forms of surveillance out there. And people use VPNs for different reasons. Chances are, if you're working remotely for a company, they may require you to use a VPN because obviously they want their traffic, their business traffic, uh, secure it. In many cases, it's going to be mandated by law. If you're using, uh, you know, HIPAA or P producing PI information, you're a doctor operating remotely, something like that, not operating on a person, but actually working, you know, out of your house, they may also require you to use a VPN. So the technology is, you know, pretty well pervasive, but the technology is also going to be needed in many instances where we're leveraging cloud computing. In fact, most people who leverage public cloud platforms and do so remotely, even if they're using it inside the company, may still require a virtual private network be put in place to encrypt the data between the person using the cloud services, whatever storage, compute, you know, databases, things like that, and the remote public cloud platform. And so it's commonplace. So the state of Michigan is now part of a broader push by some U.S. lawmakers to effectively ban or heavily restrict the use of VPNs or virtual private networks as part of age verification. Uh, you know, this with a bill that's going through the state Senate right now, including proposals that would require ISPs and websites to detect and block VPN traffic for Michigan users. Uh, this is a bit concerning. I understand why they're doing it. They're concerned about, you know, online adult content getting into the wrong hands and things like that, trying to protect kids. Happy to, you know, join you in that in, in that march. However, this is going to have one of those outcomes where no one saw it coming. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, if we're going to ban VPNs, or we're going to monitor people who are using VPNs that obviously we're going to restrict the use of people working at home, remote systems, and in many cases, the use of cloud computing. And so if this bill goes through and VPNs are going to be banned in the state, then in many instances, so are the use of cloud computing because people won't use them unless they're going to be leveraged through a VPN, if it's a remote work situation, things like that. So obviously, it's a typical government, you know, government movement where they're moving forward with, you know, some kind of laws and regulations without understanding the consequences or the unintended consequences of doing that. So on paper, these bills are marketed as child protection measures, but in practice, they collide head on with how modern IT and cloud computing actually works because VPNs are not a niche tool uh, used only to hide adult content. They are by default a way that businesses, schools, hospitals, banks, and governments securely connect people to cloud services. And so when I saw this, I was wondering, does someone ask or you know, present to the uh, lawmakers that this is likely going to be the outcome? So I understand what you're doing. You have good intentions, but I think the unintended consequences are going to be far reaching. So if Michigan forces sites or networks to block VPN connections, it isn't just attacking privacy, it's attacking the basic plumbing that keeps remote work, distributed offices and cloud hosting infrastructure secure and compliant, uh, putting the state on a collision course with its own economy and critical services. In other words, if you're banning VPNs, you may, you're going to functionally ban most of the cloud computing uh, work that's done in the state. And so obviously, you know, companies are going to figure out a way around that, uh, probably, I guess, maybe sue the state over it. Uh, around the law, but if you're just pushing businesses outside the outside of the state, so this they'll just go across the state to work and operate. If they're not allowing, if you're not allowing them to leverage technology that they feel is needed, so the overwhelming majority of serious cloud deployments, um, corporate WANs, remote offices, hybrid data centers, and work from home setups depend on VPN tunnels or VPN like encrypted links. Uh, things that are out there. We get VPN advertisements all the time. There's a bunch of them here on YouTube. I think every other ad uh, is going to be uh, for a VPN system that are there. And they're there to protect data in transit between users and cloud services. So they do serve a uh, purpose. So because the site generally can't know whether a VPN connection originates in Michigan or Madrid, for that matter, the legal risk is around moving for many platforms, that would be to block all VPN users globally 
or withdrawal services from Michigan entirely, chilling access to cloud tools and collaboration platforms. So the outcome of this is going to be, number one, I don't think it's a law that's going to, going to get through, at least in its current state. It's interesting to kind of read the law because they do say they're blocking VPNs. There's no uh, ifs, hows, or how they're doing it. And obviously, you're going to have the outcome of doing that, uh, including, you know, the use of many services we leverage remotely, including cloud computing. So I suspect it won't go through as a law. And by the way, I'm not a lawyer and not a politician and don't like politics at all. It's just interesting when this kind of stuff affects the tech, tech world. And this is kind of chilling. And the fact if they did get it through, that would limit the use of technology in the state and, of course, including cloud computing technology. So for organizations in Michigan, from small firms using Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace to enterprises that are leveraging AWS, Azure, and private cloud providers, and typically virtual private cloud networks as well, any broad VPN restriction would create an impossible compliance bind between state laws on one side and the federal security, privacy, and industry standards on the other. So this, it's interesting that this is even proposed. And obviously, I'm, I'm seeing other um, influencers out on, on YouTube that are talking about it, but they're talking about it in terms of, uh, you know, just the general purpose use of computing. And there's not a lot of people that are linking it to cloud computing. Well, it would interfere with that. And obviously, there's a direct interference with the cloud computing technology. Now, obviously, people will put out and, you know, and catch me in the comments, you can use a, a public cloud platform and not use a VPN. Uh, however, in many cases, many of the, the clients that I have that are leveraging very secure networks, they don't allow that. Because, again, they want to have their business data, in many cases, data that they have to worry about compliance issues with, such as PII, personally identifiable information, has to be encrypt, encrypted, and, and there's no other way to do it. So Michigan lawmakers are effectively criminalizing or undermining the same encryption practices that protect trade secrets, financial transactions, student records, medical data, and critical infrastructure management and, and that ha work every single day. Uh, and so in doing that, that's not going to lead to a good conclusion for Michigan. So if Michigan succeeds in normalizing VPN bans uh, or VPN blocking mandates, in other words, I, I guess they put the ISPs in charge of detecting VPNs and then reporting you to the cops. Uh, if you do that, I'm not sure how it's going to be enforced. It sets the precedent for broader attacks on encryption channels in general, pushing businesses to move operations, data centers, and jobs out of the state to avoid legal and technical uncertainty around, you know, basic, you know, cloud connectivity. And the government never really understands this when they make something uh, that's going to be restrictive in a state. It's very easy to move out of the state. Now, it's, it's more uh, restrictive if you do so within a country because it's difficult to move businesses outside an entire country. But definitely they'll move a state and businesses can shift headquarters and shift offices uh, fairly easy these days. And obviously many people are working remotely. So it's, you know, it's a matter of, uh, you know, putting different technical infrastructure around and how you're going to use this uh, with this law in place if it does pass. So it's unintended consequences, but it's also not necessarily having foresight in the way that businesses are going to respond to this. So they're not going to allow this to happen. They're going to sue them in court and, uh, you know, lobby for the for the law to be overturned if it ever passes. Um but at the end of the day, if you don't give them that option, they'll just leave. And and so your tax base will not be leaving the state because you guys are making the use of a core tool that we need to run a business, in this case, cloud computing, illegal. And people aren't going to have that. So if Michigan lawmakers choose to wage war on VPNs, and for a good cause, by the way, I think I think their heart's in the right place. Their, their brain just needs to you know catch up as to what this means. Um they're not just picking a fight with privacy advocates. They're picking a fight with mathematics, uh, with the Internet's architecture and with Michigan's own digital economy. So, again, it's just proposed. It's not going to be a law. And I don't suspect it's going to pass. Um, but it's truly chilling that this is even being considered. In other words, someone wrote this on a piece of paper and you can go out and, you know, uh, look at the, the law or the proposal of law yourself on the state of Michigan's website. But. 
at the end of the day, it, it's uh, the the thing is that it's such scary that someone even proposed this, and it's out there that something that people are considering this. But anyway, you let me know. Let me know down in the comments as to whether I'm off base or not, or if they're making too big a deal out of this, or if there's some issue I'm not considering. Um, because I'll keep an eye on this, and we'll report it here and see you know, where this laws and where these regulations go. And I think there's a lot of regulations that are coming down the pike in the United States and Europe and other countries that is going to limit, you know, some of the capabilities of cloud computing. And and the reason they're doing so is because the government is trying to put some restrictions on the way how people are leveraging cloud computing. They're concerned about the overutilization of cloud computing in, you know, areas like, uh, like the EU. And for some reason, it's good reason. Um, but at the end of the day, again, very much like this, they may have unintended consequences. In other words, even though their heart's in the right place and they're trying to do the right thing, they're going to turn out that it's going to shoot them in the foot. And I think this is going to end up that way. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest books unlocking the power of cloud and an insider's guide to cloud computing. So until next week, you stay very, very safe. And the magical YouTube algorithm thinks that this is another one of my videos that you would like to watch now.